In this video, we introduce the idea of a transverse wave, the amplitude, frequency, and wavelength of a transverse wave, and finally, the wave speed equation relating the speed, frequency, and wavelength of a wave. And to start out, I want to talk about what defines a transverse wave. And what defines the transverse wave is that the medium moves perpendicular to the direction of the wave velocity. So I marked a little red spot on this wave on a string here. And after a small time increment, this part of the wave is going to arrive at the location of that spot. And that means the spot has dropped straight down. That's that transverse motion. Eventually, this spot on the wave arrives at the location of our spot. And now it's down to the equilibrium position. And eventually, this trough will arrive at the location of our spot. And it will be all the way down here. Then this location on the wave arrives and our spot is moving back up and so on. And so I can see that as these wave crests and troughs pass the location of the red spot, it's moving up and down while the actual wave velocity is moving to the right. So that's the transverse motion that we're talking about. Now let's get some basic wave definitions down. And the first one I want to talk about is the wavelength. And there's one way to measure it on this picture. It's the distance from crest to crest. And we use the Greek letter lambda for that. It's also equally correct to say that the wavelength is the distance from a trough to another trough, so the lowest spot on the wave to the next one that's at that lowest value. Next, we define the amplitude. And you have to be really careful with this because there's a common mistake. The amplitude is that separation distance between the equilibrium position and the maximum height at a crest. That's exactly the same number as the distance from the equilibrium position to the low spot at the bottom of a trough. The common mistake is to accidentally take twice the amplitude and say that it's the amplitude. That would be the distance from a low spot to a high spot. That's twice the amplitude. I could borrow a term from pre-calculus and refer to the equilibrium position as the midline for this function. So that'll be synonymous with equilibrium. Next, I define the period for a wave. And this is not used very commonly, but it's going to be useful in the introduction. What do I mean by the period for a wave? And that gets back to looking at this individual red spot that I drew. What I'm talking about is the period of oscillation as that thing goes up and down. So the time for it to go all the way from its highest point, all the way down to the bottom, and back up to its highest point. And notice that the period has units of seconds. And you can think of that as seconds per oscillation. Finally, we define the frequency for the wave. And the frequency, instead of being seconds per oscillation, like the period, is oscillations per second. That means that frequency is the reciprocal of period, and vice versa. And the units of frequency are going to be inverse seconds, which get a special name. Those are called hertz. So like a wave with a 100 hertz frequency would be wiggling 100 times per second. Equivalently, I could say the period was 100th of a second. But when it comes to waves, frequency is a way more popular way of talking about it. Finally, there's a simple equation relating v, f, and lambda that's going to be very useful for us in problem solving. And I'll just call that the wave speed equation. And to figure out how this works, I go back again to my red spot on the string. And I just ask, how long would it take for the next crest to arrive at that location? And the answer is exactly one period, because that's how long it takes the spot to go all the way to its low point and back to its high point where the next crest has arrived. Next, I ask myself, how far has the wave traveled in the time it takes that crest on the left to arrive at the point of my red spot? Well, that's a distance of exactly one wavelength. Then I can find the wave speed by just saying it's the distance the wave traveled divided by the time it took. And it traveled the distance of one lambda, one wavelength in a time of one period. And then I see that I have a 1 over t in this, which is the same as f. And we use this formula all the time when we study waves, including using it a lot when we study electromagnetic waves later on. We end with a short example. In this example, we're told that we're watching some ocean waves that have a crest-to-crest -crest distance of 20 meters. In other words, lambda equals 20. And we also know that they're hitting the beach once every 2.5 seconds. So that means the period of oscillation 
time it takes for this wave behavior to repeat is 2.5 seconds. We want the speed of the waves, so I can write down V equals F lambda. And you could rewrite that as V equals lambda over T, but I suppose it would be more typical to just compute the frequency separately. It's the reciprocal of period. When I do that calculation, I get 0 0.4 hertz for the frequency. Plug that in. And remembering that a hertz is an inverse second, my units come out to meters per second, so that's encouraging. And I get a numerical answer of 8 meters per second for these waves. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.